Okay, hello everybody. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, and welcome to my Why Try Harder talk. So, uh, who am I? Uh, my name is Zbigniew Sobiecki. I'm um, a CEO of a company called Macoscope. And I've been pressing compile buttons since like 1997. So I'm still a developer. And while you might have not heard about me, you might have or might not hear heard about uh, the company I co-founded and I'm a CEO of, uh, of um, oh sorry. So, um, okay, since 2008, we've been delivering uh, applications, uh, creating design and doing a lot of stuff around uh, those two things. Uh, 2008, it was a year before uh, iOS was even called iOS, and even before, I guess, it was called iPhone OS or, or before the SDK, SDK was uh, out. So if my calculations are correct, um, it's been seven years of trying. And uh, trying to do a lot of stuff not really related or not necessarily related to um, development. Okay, sorry, I, I'm having some problems here. Let me just... Okay, sorry about that. Let me start once again. So I'm a, I'm a co-founder and CEO, and what we've been doing was a lot of stuff just related to the design and development, mostly for Apple platform, but not only for it. Um, and we, our clients are companies like startups and 500 companies. There are five, Fortune 500 companies, uh, and those companies are very different, and they require different approach and very different trying, just like developers are different from designers. Uh, it's been quite a ride to make all that happen. And like I said, when it didn't work, uh, it took us a lot of time because uh, me and my other co-founders were just developers. So it took us a lot of time uh, to start and to build a company around things that we were, w were very, very different and unknown really for us, like marketing or design. Uh, back then, or uh, business development. Those are the things that we had to learn by trying and actually by failing most often than not. And uh, a lot of people, when they say, uh, when they uh, talk about their own companies, they seem like, you know, there's, they're just high-fiving each other. They're so happy and everything's so great and everything's perfect. I don't know about other companies, but uh, with our company, most of the time, it wasn't so rosy. It was more of a, like failures all around. Just like, you know, when I started this presentation, it was just like that. Because I feel like the only thing, well, the things only really work, and you can understand why they work, when you try and fail. And with years, uh, of trying, we've seen, I, I wouldn't say we've seen more success, we've seen just less failures. And uh, I want to tell you a little more about uh, my company and myself, not because I want to brag, but just so you know my perspective. And uh, when I talk about trying, what really I'm trying to say here. So um, I promise there, there will be no black and white photos of me as a sweet kid, partly, partly because I wasn't one, but you know, who cares? So uh, I've tried also to kickstart mobile um, community in Warsaw, uh, building mobile Warsaw meetups and uh, mobile Central Europe uh, last year, as well as I you know, wrote this website and sold it to this instant messaging company a couple of years ago. And I've been doing really different stuff, and those are actually like whole of failures that I've uh, done. So uh, we have trying to uh, secure networks with IP tables and checkpoint firewalls a number of years ago, and uh, writing objective code in Perl, or trying to build an uh, open source based voice over IP startup, or scale websites on Rails 1. Point something, or, or writing kernel modules for FreeBSD when there was no VMware and you had to reboot your computer every, every time something failed. So, um, I feel like the older the stories that I have get, the more hilarious they, they become. Like every new tech that we try, in retrospect, is just like a comedy of failures. And not just for me personally, but for businesses and, and, and whole industries as well. 
well, it is funny only in retrospect and no way we're trying to do it, but still. So I want you to take it personally. Think about not only on um, about the tech, about the development, the design, the stuff that we do, not about the uh, code that you do, but really trying is something that we do. We do not do things most often than not. We first try to do them, and we just gotten used to the fact that some things uh, are so easy and we've done them so many times that they just work. So we can say that we do stuff, but we really only try to do it. So I myself, for example, and I'm really finishing about myself, uh, I'm a father of 10-year-old kid, which is like 10 years of trying to raise a human being. And I don't know, I, I haven't had any more difficult project than this one. Uh, and it really, really is excruciatingly, excruciatingly painful trying. Uh, this year I've quit smoking, started to move myself, and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna fail uh, running a marathon this year, but I'm going to try. And, it, and then again, you know, like, who cares? I'm not saying that to, to brag, to talk about myself and how great am I. I'm just saying that over last year or so, I've been more aware than before of the things that it requires to try and maybe succeed, or if not succeed, then maybe understand what you f why, why you failed. I've come to an understanding that there's like general meta level, so to speak, to trying. Like you can try to do a lot of stuff, but the trying itself is also something that you can understand and potentially and hopefully improve and get better at. So the obvious question, if, if, that's, if that's true, the obvious question would be, where does the success come from? And I'm not talking about you know, the success as we see it in the press, the uh, cheesy business, business guy with an award in their hand, the sign in the back, and everyone's happy, and this is success. No, I'm trying about the success uh, that probably you and I know, that something finally starts to work, that maybe the web server is starting to return uh, something that you know, resembles what you, well, you might have expected. So simple things. And you know, I, I started thinking that, okay, so that's, that's just trying. That to, to, to achieve a success, all you need to do is try. That, and so I could write down, success comes from trying, but I don't think that's true. I think that success comes from trying harder. And trying harder is a special kind of trying. Mere trying is not enough anymore. I'm not talking about the trying when, you know, th there's this project and uh, the deadline approaches, and in the final week, we decide to stay at work like 80 hours a week, and oh, this is crunch time. This time we're going to try. This time we'll try really, really hard and finally deliver it on time according to what we've predicted and what we've estimated. This is going to happen this time around. I'm not saying about this type of trying because this is just stupid. It's, it's not trying. I'm talking about trying a little harder every day and, and doing simple stuff. I know it sounds cheesy and, and you know, motivational kind of talk, but, but it really isn't. And let me tell you a little more about what I think, by, uh, what I think it is to, to try harder. So I'm talking about code like this, and when you take a look at it, you might or might not stop and think, is it okay? Is it fine? Well, it potentially maybe compiles. There might be some warnings, but you know, maybe, maybe it makes sense to fix it if it's not okay. And, and if you fix it, they, well, there might be some problems with that. Maybe it won't work. Uh, maybe you need to stay 10 seconds more at work to make it look like this. And actually, who cares? Is it worth it? Is it worth to take a look at this code and figure out maybe those two asterisks here are not very much aligned? Does it make any difference? Is it worth to fix it? Like, uh, who cares? Do you get pat in the back from your manager or your boss that you've done it? 
but he or she probably doesn't even take a look at this code. Or here, that this popover arrow over here isn't really aligned there. And I know it's a problem, but you know, it's like it, it doesn't sound like fixing it will get you Apple Design Award, right? So maybe there is some reason to actually fix it. And, and maybe making this decision to actually fix it makes all the difference. So success comes from trying harder. And you might say that's you know, really obvious, nothing original from my end. But is it really obvious? I mean, I think it's, it's not really obvious, or at least we just don't talk enough about it. Because it's not sexy. It's not even geeky sexy. You know what I mean, right? So what is sexy is this. And I'm not talking about, you know, Mark Zuckerberg barely old enough to buy himself a beer. I'm talking about the stories about heroes and stories about businesses that just happen. Like this dude here, he came up with this perfect idea for Facebook and boom, like revenue chart is like hockey stick. All of a sudden, everything's great, and money starts rolling in, and everyone's happy. And there are a lot of examples like that, and a lot of stories that people say. Like Rovio, they just wrote Angry Birds, and that was it. I mean, that was just a great idea, right? And it started to bring a lot of money. Or Tesla, who would have thought that it makes sense to build a great you know, electric car? Or Pixar, they just sat down, and create a Toy Story. And then everyone, you know, years later is reading books about them and, and they're really great. Well, this is just, you know, PR. And this is just a story. And I'm not saying that they are not winners. They are, those companies are great. You know, they are really fantastic. And they should be celebrated and they should be a, an, an inspiration for all of us because they've tried harder. It wasn't this final push, this final uh, night, this final week before deadline. It, it wasn't that at all. They really, really tried. And no one, no one talks stories about that because it's not sexy. It's not, you know, it doesn't sell. So while trying harder doesn't necessarily guarantee success, I would say that there's no other way but, but by trying harder to achieve success. Well, there is one other way, but you know, I found it when I was wrapping up the presentation, so I wasn't really able to talk and tell you in length about it. And you know, it's all the same, really. I mean, you might think that um, me coming here and t telling you all these things that you might think uh, are obvious is very, very different from all the other presentations we've had here. Uh, that they are very different from the code you've seen, that from the design patterns you may be seen, from, from all the stuff and good practices that you know great guys came here and told you all about. It's not very different because trying, trying harder is really everywhere. It's really an attitude that you either have or not as a developer, as a color, as a, a parent, as a you know, spouse. Maybe this, this attitude of trying harder is something that brought you here to this conference and, and maybe it's partly responsible for the fact that you're in this industry. And maybe even it's responsible for you being in this moment in your life here. But you know, let's not get too melodramatic uh, and get really down to business. So uh, let me tell you a little more about what I will be talking um, next. Um, I would try to discuss what does it mean to try at all and how different trying harder is from it and also does it even make sense because maybe it doesn't and if, if it makes sense as you probably guessed by now uh, why don't just people do it why do we have to discuss that why isn't the world perfect and everyone tries their best and and if and if it's so important, then everyone should do it, right? There, there should be no point in talking about this at all. 
And then I'll give you a couple of tips that you know work for me. You might have to find your own that help people try harder. So let's start off by discussing what is trying, really. Uh, and the mm, dictionary says that to try is to make an effort to do or accomplish something. And just like in physics, and I hope Newton doesn't turn in his grave when I say this, uh, we can imagine that we apply some force on an object and maybe it changes its motion. To, to simplify it very, very much. And trying in real life is kind of similar. We have an object, which is the thing that we um, want to do. Uh, we need to expend some effort to do it. And we need some time to for this effort to work. So since the object is pretty simple, because it can be really, really anything at all, uh, let's talk about what is effort. Mm -hmm. Effort, you know, might look like this, cool and strong and everything, but usually it looks more like this. So it doesn't look cool. Uh, it, for me, it looks kind of stupid. But usually when you do stuff for the first time and you're new to some things, it, you know, it kind of resembles this picture here. because. You don't know how to look cool yet. You, all, you, all, you, all you're trying to do and all you're focused on is actually doing it. And you know, you need to try and try harder and maybe in time you will be able to look as cool as the dude before, but usually not the first time. So the effort might be physical, but it also might be just mental. I mean, you effort might be just thinking process, coming up with ideas, coming up with new thoughts. That's effort too. It doesn't have to necessarily involve any action at all. So you're coming up with ideas, you refine your ideas, maybe you go for a walk, for a walk uh, to the park and coming up with you know, new ideas on stuff that you're uh, working with. The problem with effort is that it might not necessarily be enough. You may try, but it might not be really enough. And the examples of not enough effort are, for example, you've come up with this idea that uh, this time you're going to clean up your apartment. So you're trying very hard. Uh, the apartment really needs that. And maybe you really go hardcore and try to uh, wash the dishes or something. But then suddenly, Facebook notification pops up and you know something happens on the internet there's this picture of a cat and this meme and then I comment pops up then you comment then you know the thread ca keeps growing and and there goes your cleaning effort or maybe you always wanted to blog and you have this great idea for a post and you know now you're going to make it big now everyone's going to retweet it everyone's going to favorite it on Medium or where else, you're going to be famous, finally. And you had this idea. So you started to thinking about, you know, how to start, what platform, what, what, what blogging platform to use, maybe this, maybe that. You test a couple of those platforms, but it turns out that nothing is really good enough. So, you know, let's do what we always do. Let's call some blog engine first. But then, you know, what language and what framework and which libraries and, and you know, what, what are the key features? But then, you know, someone messages you this picture of a cat and this meme and this, you know, comment that your friend left and, and you know, the, trap, the thread keeps growing and there goes your blogging effort. So it clearly wasn't enough effort, but hopefully, I mean, Thankfully, in human history, we've had episodes of enough effort. And fortunately, not everything was interrupted by Facebook. So a couple of things worked. So we've sent people to the moon, for example. That was you know, nice. Uh, everyone at NASA tried really, really hard, and they delivered the project, so to speak, in a very short time frame. Really, it was because of the Cold War, because then the, 
funding got cut. And for a number of years, you know, we stopped visiting other planets, other places in the universe personally. S but sooner or later, someone will come along and, you know, make that happen. Someone will finally try harder. And back then, there, were, there was a lot of people who really tried harder. You know, some people, like Alan Turing, gave a lot of, a lot, really a lot, to trying. And, and some even gave it all by trying hard and doing all they could and even more. So how do we know how much effort is really enough? Like, estimating is extremely difficult. And we especially know this in software industry because, you know, planning poker, t-shirt size estimations, story points, release planning. We're trying to have this magic, you know, magic thing that can tell us, hey, this is going to take a team of five and five months to the day. We don't know. We never know. Because estimating is very, very hard. And even, well, it looks, from the outside, it looks easy because, you know, here's this app, just clone it. It's not as easy. And we don't have to think about the team effort. Let's, let's think about our own effort. Like, how many times have you been late to a meeting? Even though you tried really hard to figure out how long will it take to get there or, you know, how long will it take all those things that you had to do before? Or how long it someone no, were, was not responding to your email or returning your call? And not because they don't like you, just, you know, their planning was a mess because estimating effort and time required was really difficult. So with estimating, we're pretty much always wrong. It's just a matter of the degree of how much. So what happens is we're here, and we are expanding some effort by trying, and we fail. Or rarely, we're here, we're expanding some effort by trying, and we succeed. Have you, do you remember, you know, how much time, sorry, uh, Do you remember how much time did it take you to learn how to ride a bike? You were small, you know. Falling was involved, crying, probably. It wasn't for the first time. I mean, it wasn't like your parent or guardian or someone took you, sat you on a seat, and that was all. All you had to do was move along, and everything was great. Because when we do stuff for the first time, and with software projects, even similar ones to the ones we've done before, it usually is like this. We pretty much fail. So how to make it always work? Because just stating that, you know, estimation is hard and, you know, it's difficult to come up with the right amount of effort doesn't really help, right? So, well, obviously you need to prepare and that's what uh, all ag agile methodologies or, or a startup you know, new, new startup trends are trying to figure out is to prepare. But it's not that easy, you know? It's, it's not like a role-playing game when you know that if you have experience of 80 and your charisma is 120, then karma is 75, and all you need is effort of 42 because, after all, you're, you know, Steve Jobs, and that's his character card. So. Well, it's not 42, and it's actually not any number, because you can't measure effort. Not in an absolute terms, anyway. All you can is really make a, rel a relative measure. So compare it to, your to the best of your knowledge. And what do you compare it to? Well, you can compare it to someone else, or you can compare it to uh, previous experience. But really, uh, the best thing you can do is to compare it to your own experience that's fairly similar. 
if you do like planning poker and software esti uh, project estimation, then it's just an average of experiences of a team, right? And you can clarify some things and everything, but but still, it's just an approximation. It's it's nothing really, really, you know, concrete. So when you were trying to learn uh, riding a bike for the first time, I'm pretty sure you've learned a couple of things about trying, not only about <coughs> riding a bike. You knew that it will take time, it's going to be difficult at first, uh, that there will be probably balance involved and brakes and stuff like that, but also that you know you are going to fail and you're going to uh, it's going to hurt maybe and and maybe you know you, you'd expect that someone's going to laugh at you. So some lessons about trying stuck. So if any of you have motorcycle driving license and you try when you're adult, hopefully, when you try to learn how to ride a motorcycle, some ideas remain about riding a bike. So it's kind of similar, right? There will be brakes, there will be balance to be kept, there will be some falling, hopefully less than previously, and you can prepare better, you pr can prepare your expectations better, and you, you can know that you know, you're probably go not going to learn how to ride a motorcycle this evening or, or uh, this hour, because it will take time, and you will have to coordinate a lot of stuff. First you will learn one thing, then you will learn another, like your knuckles will be white from holding the handlebars very uh, hard, and in time you will learn to do it. So this is an important lesson as well, that you will try and fail and try and fail and at some point it will start to work out. So basically what happens is we're here and then expend some effort by trying. We know, fail, but then we reflect and learn so that we can, if we want obviously, to try again, to try harder. It really is very obvious and there is not much more to it, but knowing that and taking 40 minutes or an hour to realize those things and how it always works, regardless of whether it's you know software development, design, success in life or whatever, it's always like this. And it might be a success, it might not. With success, you learn too, just not as much. So trying harder basically means going a bit farther than the last time, every time. This is what it all boils down to. In sports, in agile for software development, but also in things like startups and lean startup methodology. It's just try, fail, and then you will really know, you know how to fix it. Then you need to reflect, then you need to learn from it, and you know, draw like, conscious and mindful conclu conclusions about what went wrong to figure this out. Like in Scrum, we have retrospectives just because of that. In sports, maybe we have a, tra uh, you know, trainer that will tell us, a co coach, I mean, who will tell us that these or that are the things that you need to improve. And you will be able to feel it. I mean, trying harder is, is kind of palpable feeling, because if you try harder, you know it, because it hurts. Because your mind is fighting aga against it. If you're just trying the same amount always, each and every day, then you know it's it's nice it's nice place to be you you just go along but if you try really hard really harder and you're thinking about it your mind will fight ag against it you won't be very eager to do it and you will have you will need to consciously remind yourself that it's worth to do it if you think that's what it is so when in doubt just you know choose the harder way there's nothing more to it. 
Because if it doesn't hurt, then you know, maybe you're not trying hard enough. If you're trying to build your knowledge or self-discipline or uh, muscle, it's all the same. So you will feel different and you might get a little bit frustrated with other people because sadly, you know, not a lot of people are really, really trying hard. And you might get irritated because of that, but also other people will probably get frustrated with you. So you need to think, you know, really clearly about do you want to do this? Because that people get irritated with you is okay. It's just part of trying. They will tell you that the perfect is the enemy of good, or cite Pareto principle, or say that premature optimization is the root of all evil. Or they will call you perfectionist, or laugh, laugh ironically at your newly found appreciation for detail. You know, they will call you Steve Jobs or something. Well, the problem is that the definition of perfection is different for different people, and it changes over time. So what for us, attendees of this conference, might be just normal thing and just you know, obvious kind of thing to do, for other people might, might, might be crazy. Like, have you ever heard people saying, you know, who cares how this app looks? Ho who cares how this project looks as long as it works? That's all there is to it. And hearing all those presentations and you know how to build stuff better and more efficient way and, and create better code, some people will definitely say that it's, it's just crazy. It's, you know, those guys are mad. But for us, it's a normal thing. So all you need to do is to be mindful and remember to reflect, learn, come to this conference or other events, ask, uh, ask another people, and try harder than the last time. And ask yourself, is it all that I can do? Is there anything that I can do better? Did it really hurt? Because some guy at the conference said that it should hurt a little bit. But does it make sense to try harder? I mean, you know, does it make any difference? After all, there are things like this, and people do buy that, or like this, or like this. And there was actually a whole team of people behind projects like this, and whole team of designer and software developers, and things like that, or this. This is an Amstrad internet communicator or something. Right around when the after the email popped up, or Apple doing something like that. Or here. So someone forgot to place this container in the bathroom for the soap. So why don't we just use screws and st stick it there? You know, it not always worked, or someone tried to remove it, to use this cool idea in their own home. But, well, you know, other problems happened and the whole uh, whole tops were removed as well, so they bought a new top. It's not exactly the same as the previous, but you know, who cares? So no biggie. And why try harder? Well, you know, it might be obvious, but let me state a couple of facts. So for consumers, the people who actually buy the things that were done either by trying harder or merely trying or doing just enough, uh, means that we have better products. Duh, that's pretty obvious. But we also have less crap, which is kind of less obvious, because trying harder also means to refuse to do stuff that's just stupid, or maybe do it in a way that it doesn't necessarily create more stuff. Well, obviously, there's business involved, and so it's not that simple, but you know, we, we, we could discuss it for 12 hours if we were to consider everything. Things are, gets, are getting simpler and we are getting more efficient thanks to that mostly. And you know, things are simpler because someone actually put more thought into it to make them simpler and we don't have to deal with things that break. 
like this tap there or you know other stuff that I showed before. So we have actually more time thanks to it. I know it sounds cheesy again, but it's true. Like if you spend more time into create in into creating something that's actually helpful and you know it's usable, then you save other people's time. Then we're calmer and happier. Do you remember, uh, and I'm sure to it happened to pretty much all of us at some point in life, that some relatives asked, uh, asked us to help them choose a laptop and you know install the windows and maybe just configure this thing and show them a couple of things. Well, it wasn't a great experience for me, I don't know about you, because someone still a lot of software in there that's not necessarily useful. So that's 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 the right example, I think. Windows machine, especially old ones, with a lot of you know, adware and whatever were stuck inside there, and something simpler. So for makers creators, you know, developers, designers, people like us, we're simply getting better at what we do thanks to trying harder. Because we have this reflection time and learning, and we really, really learn much quicker and maybe much better thanks to trying harder. It's not, not only uh, about the products that we actually create. Because we reflect, and we can also, by reflection, improve things around us. Like, for example, you can sh send me an email, and there will be a link to do it at the end, saying, dude, never show up. It was complete waste of time, and I should have left the room because it was boring. Or maybe, hey, that was great, but, you know, this incident at the beginning, it, no, that, that wasn't good. So we can really care, and by caring, we can provide a feedback so that other people wir will improve because we've tried harder, and for me, and I think for every presenter here, feedback is important, so why don't we just do it? This cycle of improvement helps us just you know, grow as human beings. If, 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 if you stop and realize, for example, that you have problem with something, that's some, something very personal to you, uh, something that you realize that, I don't know, I, don't, I can't come up with a good example, but something very, very intimate, then you can stop, think about it and maybe you know seek help counsel or or read up and just fix yourself if you need that if you think that's really important but if you just go through your life and not try fixing those things then you know that's not going to happen probably until someone tells you which is not always nice so we also show other show others how to how to do stuff if someone's interested if for example after this presentation after this talk just any of you will spend some time reflecting and you know trying harder in whatever you do then i will feel accomplished like it, it made sense for me to prepare this and and come here and talk about this because i've showed someone and someone maybe sh will show others even if it you know fail or something it doesn't matter by doing so we are so invest in the future because trying harder is really the long-term strategy. I will go into details in a second. And you're, you're going to laugh probably, but, you know, <laughs> we keep the human race alive by doing so. So short-term versus long-term. Uh, good enough is great short-term strategy. Like, you know, it's easy. The result is pretty predictable. Uh, you, when you improve on others, you might not have huge leaps, but someone fail, you can fix it, or you, you will just do 1% better. And, you know, that's, that's a product that someone is for sure able to market and sell. So everyone does that. The wins are cheap. The risk is small, so you might not have too big of a problem to pitch it to some uh, investor and get money for your idea. You know, the outcome might not be as great, but still, like, Short-term strategy is okay for some things. And quality, you know, you can just stick go-to line in this code and it will work, right? So, no, who cares? And 
I'm not trying to sound like good enough is always bad. It's not. For startups that, for example, don't have a lot of money, uh, it might work. I'm sure you've all heard the, the story about Google, who was using, um, the guys were using doors as their uh, tables, or uh, similar stories about frugality in Amazon. I, it was great. I mean, you can sit people on buckets turned upside down. You don't have the money, so that's the only way you could do, and trying harder <laughs> does, it's not going to help short term. But if you still want to walk in your 50s and you don't change that to longer term strategy, then you know that might not work as well. So trying harder is long term. And I mean, what I mean by that is that the result is not obvious. And it's for sure more difficult to get money for uh, efforts that are, you know, really gonna take time and you don't really know what's gonna happen and you know that you're gonna fail initially at least and it's not going to be pretty like no one's gonna come to you and say hey okay what's this code review stuff tell me all about it I want to make a movie or about it right it's not something awesome you just try you just fix this code and and it's not pretty no one's going to applaud no one's going to give you a pat in the back maybe and you're only incrementally getting better. So it's slow, takes time, cash. But the lessons you're gonna learn will sit more deeply in you and you know, for much longer time. And the quality with that approach is really the only way forward. I mean, if you try to do um, long-term strategy in anything and you, from, from the get-go, you don't care about the quality and all this technical depth that you're going to acquire, it's not going to hap help you succeed for sure. So if you're going slow, just try to do it the right way. But saving human race by trying harder? Are you kidding? Well, I do not. Uh, I'm not trying to kid you. Um, I'm no Charles Darwin, but I think that mammoths were not trying hard enough always wanted to have a mammoth in my slides. Uh, I know it's an uh, oversimplification and, you know, it's maybe a little over the top, but I'm pretty sure that if my grand, 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 grandfather would lie down and said, fuck, I'm not going to hunt today, I'm tired, and all I'm going to do is look at the sun all day long, then probably I wouldn't be here today, still a simplification, but you, you see what I mean. I mean, by trying harder and not stopping to try harder, we keep being and keep future generations being, whatever that is, that might be human, humans might, might be something else. So you might say it's far-fetched, and like those motivation, uh, you know, like from this motivational talks where you do whatever and it uh, means, you know, some outrageous thing. And that's not real, but do you remember these? Oh yeah, th these are still around. But your children, if they are small, or if you do not have children but plan on having in the couple next couple of years, for them it might not be really obvious what it is. Because, you know, internal combustion engines are doomed. I don't know when, but soon. And if those companies don't transform, they will die off like dinosaurs. And have they tried harder? Well, they could. They could. They tried harder at different things like marketing and, and studies, you know, what people are going to buy. Does it have to be safer or different color or something like that? Or those guys. I mean, Nokia was doing great phones. My first phone was Nokia and it was amazing. The problem with that was that they, you know, I apparently, and I'm no business analyst, but for me, they realized that software is important a little too late. And they could have tried harder. They had great people, great engineers, you know. They, have they had all they needed to have to make that happen. But apparently, you know, for some manager or some 
high executive somewhere down there, it was enough, right? Those devices were cool enough. So it's pretty important stuff if you think about it, like mobile phones and the whole automati automotive industry, it's important, right? It's not just, you no know, one line of code, but it really, all it boils down to is trying harder and trying to do better software, better cars, coming up with great ideas, trying a little more than you, uh, is required of you by industry or by your boss. You know, you might obviously say that there, there are those gigantic forces at play that, you know, geopolitical business stuff, but it's just an excuse. I mean, sure they are and they are at play and everything, but if you try really hard and a lot of enough people try really hard, then it doesn't really matter. So here's Elon Musk, the guy behind uh, Tesla cars. And he does know a lot of about trying, I think. He co-founded PayPal. Uh, he's behind uh, space, SpaceX. And they are building rockets and stuff. You, I'm sure you all know, know those guys. And you know, it's not a pretty story. There, there, there's this great biography that went out uh, this year, and I highly recommend reading it. Uh, both those companies, SpaceX and Tesla, were close to bankruptcy at the same time, and he's like probably the biggest shareholder, and he's the CEO, or at least he's running those two companies himself. So it might be a little, you know, difficult for him to, to go through those times. So, and you know, it's not easy stuff. They're competing with, uh, with Tesla, they're competing with whole industry, with uh, SpaceX, you know, their competitors are like NASA, Lockheed Martin, or Boeing, and companies like that. And, and there's obviously government in, 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 in the equ whole equation, so, so it's kind of difficult. But what he's trying to do, he's trying to uh, basically, his ultimate goal is to uh, make human species multiplanetary. And he's going to start by sending people to Mars. And I'm not saying that, you know, he's so cool and awesome and he's the only guy who could do it. But for, for plans like this, a lot of things need to be aligned at the same time. You need money, you need motivation, you need not to be motivated by money. Uh, and, and you need teams, you, you need to be willing to spend enough of your own time and, and know how to do those things and you will have to be courageous and everything. So I think that, you know, I'm, I, I've picked Elon for this example because I think that he's really one of the few examples where, where he's really, really ahead of anyone else in at least those two fields. Um, and why is Mars actually important? You can say that it's just a stunt for him to get more PR and for more people to, to talk about him. But there's this blog called waitbutwhy.com and I highly recommend it. And this guy analyzes a lot of stuff. And the fact is that the human race, he describes human race as a hard drive that doesn't have a backup. And in the grand scheme of things, we have this uh, line here, and this is the all, I guess, all the time that the universe has uh, have existed, and 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 actually, we have only a very small stretch of time when something bad is going to happen statistically for sure, that's going to wipe us off the face of the planet. He analyzes the history. He knows what's going to happen uh, in the future, because. Stuff happened in past and, and can happen again, and we can all die, just like that. So I guess sending people to other planets uh, improves our chances dramatically, and I think that's you know, a worthy goal of pursuing. But what if, back to trying, what if uh, Elon Musk one day woke up and say like, "Boy, I'm so tired." Let's just, you know, forget all about it and, and I'm I'm worth tens of billions anyway, so who cares? And I've done a lot of stuff, so let's just let's just forget about it. 
at least two industries would be super happy for that to happen. And forget about Mars and all those plans. So I think that's very, very important because Elon is just an example, very particular one, but there are lots and lots of bright people in this room and, and in general that, that have the potential to, to change things and be extra extraordinary, but it's important for them to try because a lot of those people don't really try. I don't know why. There are a lot of reasons and we will go to that in a second. So the paradox is that with showing the way for others to follow and to try harder, the paradox is that even if we, if we fail, or <laughs> actually especially if we fail, we're, we're succeeding in doing that if we explain it the right way. Because the clue here is to know that if you fail, then you can really, really make use of this failure to try again harder. And you know, the question, the obvious question is, why don't we try harder by default? If that's so obvious, you know, let's face it, I'm not saying anything truly new or original. I'm just stating the things that we intuitively all know. So why don't we try harder? Th and there are a lot of reasons, uh, probably much more reasons than I I uh, will outline here, but first, we're lazy, you know. It's out of our comfort zone. I mean, we, when we try and try harder, it's not nice. I mean, it hurts because we're afraid we're going to fail. Then we fail. Like I failed with this presentation initially. And, you know, why bother? The other thing is that we're focused on short term, on instant gratification. How many times have you heard this term, instant gratification? You know, credit cards. Why bother earning money for the new computer? Why I can just get it on my credit card, right? Right. Someone will earn money because of that. That's granted. And, but, you know, this is how our, our culture works, actually. So, uh, trying harder isn't, isn't sexy, isn't pretty. Like I said before, no one's going to praise us for it. Even, even with those who succeeded, no one tells how, how hard they tried. This is not a key selling point. This is not main theme of any movie about the heroes of our day and, uh, and the businesses that really worked out. And we have this herd mentality. Like, if you work in a company where no one really tries, then it's kind of difficult to try because no one appreciates that. And it's not, it's not really important. You can, you know, do all those things for yourself and you might be the judge whether you tried hard, hard or not and you ultimately always are. But if everyone does that, or no one does that, then, you know, y we, we don't want to be different. We want to fit in and not be weirdos. And lastly, we we're getting frustrated because we pursued not really the kind of perfection that's worth pursuing. But have no fear of perfection. You will never reach it, as Salvador Dali said. We should use perfection wisely. And what I mean by that is perfection is great as a motivation. It's great as a something that we strive for. But it's not very good in as something that we should compare to. Unless you're, you know, world-class athlete or record breaker in something. It's just a direction. It's, it's, it's not a really a goal. And it's important to check our progress only by looking back, not on other people, like this dude here. He's pretty fast. And if, if we see Bolt on TV and then go out by running shoes and go for a run and after 
one kilometer, we're close to heart attack, and we you know, almost die of exhaustion, and come back home, toss our new running shoes aside, and say, fuck this, I'm never going to run again, because I'm never going so fast. He's still faster. Then, you know, what's the point? I mean, it's, it's good to go to run, it might even be good to buy decent running shoes, so you don't get hurt, but don't compare. Compare only to the things that you've done before, and if you actually improve. So why, how to, how to try harder? I, I don't have, well, with trying and trying harder in particular, there are no silver bullets. I don't have great answer for it, but I will tell you a couple of things that um, worked for me, and maybe they will work for you, or if not, maybe you will you know, come up with something that works for you better. Uh, so first and foremost, think this through. It doesn't make sense to, it, it, it doesn't make sense for you to spend an hour of your time here with me and then just go out and yeah, I mean, it wasn't that bad, so I suffered but I stayed. You need to think this through because if you, if you truly want to try trying harder, then you need to have this thought through so you can recall it in times when it's difficult that, okay, this is my idea of trying harder. Okay, I remember what I came up with. I remember the things and key stuff that, for, uh, that trying harder means for me. Because if, if, if there will come the time of trial and and you will start thinking about what I just said and trying to recall and some of those things or the things that uh, you know need to be thought through, then you're not going to make it because it's too difficult. You need to have it you know, in your hand, so to speak. And realize that your choice is always there. You really can choose to try harder. If you're doing some development, Maybe there is no time to fix everything, and maybe you know the world isn't perfect, and, and, and there is no time to fix the stuff that you've done, and the deadline is really, really close. But if you make note of the things to fix, put them into backlog or whatever, then it makes sense, because you actually saw those things, you've seen it, you've decided to make a note of it for, that for others to remember. So there is always a choice of trying harder. And do it for yourself. Don't compare. Don't do it for your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your boss. Don't expect for someone to applaud you. Don't expect someone to say, hey, how, how cool it is what you've done. Don't, you know, don't write software to get stars on GitHub or retweets or whatever. Do it just for yourself. I mean, obviously it's cool and you're doing it for other people to use, but don't judge yourself by other people's because you're going to get frustrated and you're going to stop. And, you know, you want to do it or not. So compare only to your past results and action. And compare, please do. See the improvement. Or come up with, or reflect, learn, come up with better ideas to, to try harder. But only to your past results and actions, not to others. And this is really simple. Set, set a reminder. I don't know, I, I always come up with great ideas and I always forget them instantly. And then a year later I was, okay, now I remember. So please set a reminder or post a post not note somewhere just to reflect and just to check. Am I trying hard or not? And take pride in trying harder. Enjoy it. Be proud of it. Try harder. Thank you. Uh, guys, do you have some questions? Of course, you can win. Uh, because of our books. Hi, thank you for your talk. Really motivational. You're welcome. 
Uh, so trying harder, uh, does it mean uh, that we are always out of comfort zone? Uh, but uh, you are not looking uh, stressy and unhappy. So what is your top personal advice how to try harder and enjoy it? I think the key here is to start small and just, you know, make another step. Uh, right now I'm, I'm, you know, running and finished half marathon and everything, but a couple of years ago, after like 300 meters, meters, I was close to heart attack and everything. And I was very, very frustrated with, with this perfection that, okay, it's going to be really painful and never gonna happen for me. But just do small things, like with, uh, you know, preparing MVP for an application, just cut all the features, just make one more step, just add 100 meters, or uh, to, to your work day, maybe stay five minutes longer, or just before, um, five minutes before 5 p.m., uh, set a, remind a reminder saying, okay, now just review what you've done, uh, try to think it for a couple of minutes, and that's all. If it's too painful, then it's not going to work. And it's, 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 it's very, tr very true what you said. It's, it's going to be difficult. You need to start very, very small. Any no more questions? Uh, yes, I have some preamble before my question. I have a small daughter, she just uh, start uh, walking and uh, actually it's very good to see how she is trying to learn, she is falling, she is hurting and she is, uh, and when she start uh, working, she's not stop. She just start, start to climb in the chairs, uh, climb in the, uh, like a bed and so on and um, also I have um, some note uh, that um, for example if you're working in a product company you have one product you're working on a single instance and uh, you always improve it and uh, do some as you say you make an effort you do harder because it's your own like uh, own child or own uh, right. idea of total company and uh, if you're in outsource company, uh, for example, I was also working before in not a lot, but some outsource companies. And the problem, I think, is that uh, they spend a lot of time on metrics, on uh, some investigations. And uh, to try harder there, it's, it's harder than in product company. Because uh, you have a project, you need to finish it. And as you said, uh, no one cares about your code. Uh, customers are not cares about how it, uh, is it good, is it perfect? They are cares only uh, on result. But uh, it's responsibility of developers to, uh, how to say, it's mm, like to improve their code, to create a better comfort zone for themselves, uh, to improve this code, to like, uh, make some statistics and so on, how much users. And um, so my questions uh, for now, for trying harder and uh, like we have all this stuff that we have around. We have a building, we have us, uh, like uh, uh, as everyone knows that uh, the most uh, better for immunity when people are uh, have less food, they are uh, in cold and uh, they have some strange uh, conditions. And uh, what do you think in the future? So now, when we get all this stuff, we uh, some hundred years ago we living in, in a forest and we don't have everything in this. What do you think? What will be in the future? Uh, what will be the next steps of human race? Mars or uh, something else? Or uh, where are we c we will be when we will uh, try harder? Thanks. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, but I'm not the right guy to answer it. I have no idea. But what I, what I can say is that if we try harder, then we will certainly get there. But I don't know where it, where it leads. Like, you know, there are great futurists like Ray Kurzweil and, and others, and, and you can think about you know, those guys and read about those things. Uh, what I know, and it, it, it's pretty convincing to me, is that if we don't do anything, they're statistically we're doomed, like I say. Like I said, and we need to you know, join forces and try harder and get somewhere else or protect ourselves from whatever can happen. 
And the second part, do we have uh, your own projects, uh, not outsource? Yes, we, uh, you mean my company? Yes, your company. Uh, yeah, so we, we initially started as a, a Mac development company, <laughs> hence Macroscope. Um, and we do have still our projects, but most of the time what we do, aside from client projects, are just things that can we, we can share, we do some open source, and then we can uh, you know, uh, show off others. Uh, or help other developers to, to, to work on stuff. Uh, simply because it's very difficult to have both things, like great outsourcing company and your own products. Something has to, has to go and we've made that decision. Uh, okay, I have a question. Um, it's my early feedback right now, but I, th I think in your presentation to visualize uh, about how we as a people, we are lazy, uh, you could totally uh, insert a screenshot from a movie, Idiocracy, and my question <laughs> is, have you watched it? <laughs> yes, I, I've seen this movie, and I try to forget it <laughs> very hard. No, sure, sure, that's, that, that's true. Thank you. And yeah, please uh, visit my website. I, I set it up uh, last night and found out that there is uh, .horse TLD. So if you have like 30 seconds, please do. Uh, leave a feedback if you can. Are there any other questions? Uh, just one more. Uh, I wanted to bring up situation when you have hard project, for example, and uh, you are struggling with something. And actually, I think sometimes uh, some kind of break from the project would uh, clear your mind. And I think that's that's uh, that's my question. Uh, what do you think about this? Uh, should we should we always try more or just take some breaks sometimes from from these kinds of situations? What do you think? Well, it's it's kind of difficult to achieve a balance between getting frustrated and throwing it all uh, and going to Bieszczady, as someone <laughs> said, uh, and at the same time to make it hard enough for you to. Uh, really learn from it. What we do in our company, we just rotate developers for, uh, from one project to another or to our internal staff that they can really have the control over and uh, write open source every, every now and then uh, as long as it you know, works uh, for them. Because uh, sure, doing everything all the time with too much weight is like you know, you're going to break your muscle instead of build it, so to speak. So yeah, you need to find the place where you can rest, basically, or time to do it. Uh, my question is shorter and maybe more practical. Uh, you are a businessman, you are running your own company. Um, my question is, if you have an idea and trying harder, like a startup or some, some other ideas, but it's not working out, but you're still trying. Uh, what's the like break point when you must stop and think about uh, whether you must like move in other direction? So th there's no one answer to this question, obviously. Um, but so yeah, so it's, it's kind of difficult because on one hand we have this uh, whole idea of persistence and not giving up and trying harder and and trying harder all the time. But at some point, uh, trying harder means also changing your idea, and it's going to be probably even harder than uh, keeping at it. Uh, I don't know. You need to you need to decide for yourself. I had this uh, I I had this um, situation uh, with uh, Macroscope when for a number of years we were creating only our own apps and trying to make ends meet and build a team and everything was extremely difficult. We knew that we have great engineers, great designers, but still making you know, money w wasn't a very easy in App Store back then. <laughs> I'm not trying to say it's right now. Uh, and we had to make this decision that right now we're going to build great software for other companies. And it wasn't very easy. And I don't know if, if there is any one answer to this question, but Maybe maybe it's a breaking point that uh, uh, the person before asked about. Maybe if by trying harder you will get so frustrated that you're going to uh, be too tired to continue doing anyway uh, anything, 
then it's you know high time to change it. Okay. Any more questions? No. So Zbigniew, just two the best questions and. Uh, I think the first two were the best, actually. Okay, two first. Yes. So, gentlemen, here and here. Thank you very much.